allow me to share with you my vision for the university. I envision PUP to become the pioneering and leading National Polytechnic University in the 21st century. With a National Polytechnic University status, it will bring more opportunities for the university to further strengthen its academic programs and improve organizational performance as an institution for higher education. In pursuit for this vision, my mission for PUP is for it to recognize its catalytic role for national development. PUP will ensure inclusive and equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning opportunities through a re-engineered polytechnic education. By re-engineering, we look into the existing processes and programs in order to achieve higher quality of academic programs and services following the principles of effectiveness and efficiency. With this mission in mind, I have formulated 10 pillars as my reform agenda for the university. Pillar 1. Dynamic, transformational, and responsible leadership. Empower academic and administrative leaders by following the core principles of good governance to create collective growth and unity. Here I would like to highlight an innovation by introducing the development of an integrity management plan to assess, plan, and implement anti-corruption strategies that will secure the institution against corruption and abuse. Likewise, asset management and resource generation will be aggressively pursued to ensure productivity and finance the implementation of the plans and projects for the university. Pillar 2, Responsive and Innovative Curricula and Instruction. We aim to provide world-class polytechnic education that responds to national and global needs by developing intellectually challenging curricula and design academic programs that are based on industry demands to provide the learners with adequate and relevant competencies and skills and prepare them for a successful and rewarding careers. In a rapidly changing world, we recognize the paradigm shift in curriculum to outcome-based education with lifelong learning approach. Pillar 2 also sits on the framework of internationalization of Philippine higher education through transnational education by promoting academic mobility among faculty and students and global dimension into the curricula and teaching process. Pillar 3, Enabling and Productive Learning Environment. Following Education in Industry 4.0, we aim to increase and enhance the use of new technology to enable student learning and engagement, as well as advanced teaching process and methodology through new and state-of-the-art facilities that will support the overall learning and teaching experience in the university. Pillar 3 likewise includes campus development and the provision of conducive learning centers and facilities for students and faculty. Pillar 4, Holistic Student Development and Engagement. We will empower students as well as rounded learners and active young leaders as we open opportunities for various academic mobility and venues for honing skills and personal development, being the principal stakeholder of the university. Recognize academic freedom as a form of self-expression and a platform to showcase students' intellect, skills, and creativity. Pillar 5, Empowered Faculty Members and Employees. Likewise, we are looking into the holistic development of our faculty and employees as productive, competent, and experts in their respective fields. We will encourage our faculty roster through formal education, capacity building, research and extension initiatives, faculty immersion, and other academic engagements, both local and abroad. We will ensure that both our faculty and employees will have a vibrant career development path as public servants in this state university. Pillar 6, Vigorous Research Production and Utilization. We will continue to strengthen the research culture in the university 
by promoting discovery and innovation through increasing disciplinary and collaborative research integration across academic disciplines to create new knowledge, utilize research findings, and develop innovative products. Pillar 7. Global Academic Standards and Excellence Achieve the highest levels of recognition in quality and compliance standards from CHED, AACUP, and other international accrediting and regulatory bodies for higher education. We will intensify our efforts to achieve and sustain better academic performance and continue to excel as a top-performing school in various professional licensure examinations and produce more top notches as well as sustain our status of being the most preferred graduates of employers. Likewise, we aim to establish and to be recognized as centers of development and excellence in our academic programs. Pillar 8, Synergistic, Productive, Strategic Networks and Partnerships. Synergize and force strategic linkages and partnerships across all sectors of society and the global community in line with the overall plans and programs of the university. Establish alliance with the government, industry sector, NGOs, and the academe will lead to resource sharing, program support, and research collaborations beneficial for all. Pillar 9, Active and Sustained Stakeholders Engaging. Harness a healthy and harmonious organization by empowering all its stakeholders, both internal and external, through open communication networks, consultative and participative undertakings, and team building activities, recognizing that all stakeholders can greatly contribute towards the betterment of the university. Pillar 10, Sustainable Social Development Programs and Projects. Expand access to education knowledge building, and information dissemination through sharing of expertise and resources for community development, support inclusivity approach and education by embarking on educational wheels, which aims to bring access to education closer to communities, following the principle of no one will be left behind. As the University of the People, we should bring the university closer to their hearts to serve their needs and extend assistance in mainstreaming public service. Our institution must continue to stand as one for the values that we have inculcated. For the past 115 years, we have exemplified our quest for truth, excellence, equity, relevance, effectiveness, integrity, and academic freedom. Lastly, I call upon each and everyone to join me in this journey. Together we stand as one para sa sintang paralan para sa ating bayan. isang profesor na nangarap, nanalig at nagsunikap upang maabot ang mga ating sabihan. Saksihan natin ang buhay ni Professor Ben Andres. Ako si Ben Andres, 60 years old, at uh, electronic senior my professor. Actually, ang aking nagmula ay medyo malungkot. Lumakit kami isang uh, baryo ng uh, Lupao Nueva Ecija at doon ay nakatira kami sa gitna ng bukid na kung saan uh, pag kami pumapasok sa eskwelahan, kailangang bagtasin namin ang kabukiran 
mga almost 5 kilometers, ganun. Galing ako sa broken family. Uh, ang aking ama kasi, nasirang ama ay isang uh, foreman ng construction na medyo may pagka-womanizer kung saan siya mga destino, nagkakaroon ng relasyon. Kaya nung medyo mapuno na yung aking nanay, hindi uwi kami sa Nueva Ecija. Kaya kami natuloy sa, natira sa gitna ng bukid kung saan uh, doon kami lumaki. Noong uh, second year high school, nung mamatay ang aking tunay na ama, ay uh, nawalan na kami ng konting uh, sustento kung kaya uh, natingil din ako ng pag-aaral. Limang taon na akong uh, hindi nag-aaral noon at uh, gumagawa na lang din sa bukid kung ano anong trabaho uh, makakatulong lang sa aking nanay. Nagkaroon niya ako ng uh, stepfather at taga San Fernando La Union siya. At doon, maraming pwedeng pagkakitaan sa San Fernando La Union. At ang uh, isang uh, naging pati uh, ng aking buhay doon ay yung ako'y ipasok sa construction ng uh, Central Bank of the Philippines bilang uh, regular na laborer. Nagtrabaho ako sa Central Bank of the Philippines uh, at nung matapos yung uh, project na yun, isinama ako sa Maynila ng mga aking mga project engineers. Atlantic Gulf and Pacific na Central Bank Project, nagumpisa ako bilang uh, junior carpenter. Gumagawa ng mga temporary office ng uh, mga project engineers, gumagawa ng mga scaffoldings. Kung minsan naman, ay ang kasama sa aking uh, trabaho, nagiging... Uh, Kantero o mason ang tawag din sa amin noon, yung, yung mga nagsisement. So, yun yung aking naging trabaho sa Atlantic Gulf and Pacific. No? Nung dalhin niya ako ng agent rito sa Maynila, nagpasya akong mag-aral sa year high school. At tinapos ko yung high school ko in three more years. Meron akong kaklaseng nag-invite sa akin para kumuha ng entrance exam sa PUP. Sumama ako sa kanya. Maswerte namang uh, naipas ako, kaya nagpasya ako ang kuha ng electronics engineering. Yun yung umpisa nun. Uwi ako ng Nueva Ecija ulit, nakigapas sa anihan para magkaroon lang ng uh, pang-enroll sa second year. Second year college, mga around uh, 23, ganyan na ako noon. Mga 23 years old na ako. At uh, katunayan niya nun, uh, kinakansyawan na ako ng mga kaklase ko. Kasi may edad na raw ako, bakit hindi na lang vocational lang kuhanin ko? Kaya lang, parang uh, determinado ako. Nung nasa gitna ako ng bukid, madilim. Uh, merong bumagsak na bulalakaw, yung falling star ba, at nag-wish ako. Balang araw, magiging engineer din ako. Kaya parang pinanghawakan ko yun na sa aking pangarap, sa aking goal sa buhay parang uh, pinanindigan ko na rin. Ang aking trabaho ay may kinalaman sa pag-print production ng mga instructional materials. electronics engineering. Dahil yung aking professor na may-ari no. Kaya habang ginagawa ko, natututo rin ako. At yung uh, medyo ne negatibong epekto nga, kulang ka sa tulog, na kung papasok ka as a regular student, na mga pagkakataong na uh, inaantok pa sa klase, at uh, ang performance mo siyempre, medyo Pag-aaral, 
So, kailangan balancing ko lahat ng aking commitment. O, oh, siyempre, dito, na nakapagtapos ako, dahil uh, walang ibang eskwelahan noon na talagang nakapagtapos ka ng engineering, kung hindi dahil lang sa PUP. At uh, naging mapalad din ako na ako ang isa sa dalawang unang na-produce na engineer ng PUP. Ako yung naging uh, unang alumnos na naging uh, department head ng electronics engineering. Ganun din, uh, una-unahan din akong naging alumnos na naging uh, dekano ng College of Engineering. Family-oriented dahil doon. At ganun din, sa hirap sa buhay, hindi dapat maging hadlang yon para sa ating ambisyon. Sasamahan lang ng uh, ating pagtsatsaga, pagsusumikap, uh, siyempre, yung uh, ating spiritual na aspeto, huwag kakalimutan. Inaakibat ko sa definition ng success. Na yung success, considered na acronym, yung S, seeing myself as a successful me. Na ako, yung you, unique. <laughs> Hindi ko kinukompare sa iba. So, unique as me. Pagkatapos, uh, C, I consider C as uh, controlling myself. Then, another uh, C for success is uh, complying myself to be an achiever. Ganon. And yung E, I'm educating myself. Kasi sabi nga nila, learning is a continuing uh, process. At yung S, sinasatisfy ko yung aking sarili, ano yung aking commitment, lahat ng aking commitment. At uh, yung last S, yung sacrifice. Yun yung definition ko ng success. Emerson is a global technology and engineering leader. We operate in over 150 countries. We are uh, 110,000 employees worldwide. And here in the Philippines, we have over 2,000 employees. My name is Nikki Florento. I'm from Dal, Philippines. I'm handling the university relations and services hiring. Pagasa Steel Supply is concrete reinforcing bars of the Philippines' booming construction industry. We have been the leading supplier of quality steel bars for the past 52 years. EGS is an Algorica company. It is one of the fastest growing BPO companies in the Philippines right now. I'm Cecil Venantia and I'm Branding and Communications Director of Psych Station.
we don't decide whether you're from a top tier university or a state university. We decide based on our assessments that includes exams and interviews. Having said that, a lot of the else workforce in the Philippines are from PUP. 55 to 80 hires annually, those coming from PUP alone. And as a matter of fact, 14 of the homegrown employees who started from staff and supervisor have been promoted. Currently, uh, we have 13 employees from the PUP. They're working in a different field. So most of them are engineer, some are in sales, most of them are in the higher position. There's a huge pool of students that we can really um, harvest from. And we know the, the reputation that they bring. So we're glad that we have a university like PUP that we can uh, rely on for, uh, for our future employees. I love the graduates of PUP. They are not only fun to work with, but you can rely on them. They are very, very dependable. PUP graduates are an exact match and fit to Pagasa Steel's mission and vision. The reason why we prefer the PUP graduates is the fact that we notice that um, they have a common denominator. Very hardworking. See, whatever happens, they'd still work. Even if it's raining, they'd still come to work. You give them additional tasks, they'd accept. They are resilient. Very passionate, aside from being resilient. Because we can see that they're very dedicated with their job. And we've seen a lot of PUP graduates, not just in one department. They turn out to uh, adapt very well and adjust well to our company here in the Philippines. They're productive employees and they stay with us for a long time. The stand out PUP graduate is their loyalty to the company. Integrity and ethics, drive for results, intellectual capacity, and adaptability. So when we hire PUBNs, they have this kind of um, they have this kind of competencies. Of course, they're very intelligent, responsible, responsible in a sense because whenever um, we meet these graduates and we ask them what are their future plans, they would always come up with answers like helping out their family or because I'm done with school, I'll help out another sibling. So you would know already that. Um, these kids, even before um, they actually embark on um, certain work, they already have um, goals in mind. They're not maarte, no? Whatever you give them, they know that if it's for the purpose of the job, they will do it. And so they have, uh, they're the ones that survive the challenges of work. They don't shirk away from responsibility. Um, they're the type who, whatever the job requires, they're up for the job. PUPNs enable people everywhere to grow and thrive. PUP is one of the pillars of the nation because it is an institution that provides good graduates and people who really contribute to the success of the community or to the success of the country. All the people associated with PUP, if you're a graduate, congratulations and uh, you should be proud of yourselves. For those of you that are students, please continue the tradition, the proud legacy that your school has. Some of you, PUP, you work for us now. We appreciate you. We know you're good employees. For those of you that might work for us in the future, please consider us. We'd love to have you. We know that you make a great employee for us. UPNs, bring everything you are. If you have big ideas, let's talk. Come work where passion meets possibility. You can visit jobs.del.com for opportunities. To pursue your dreams and work hard for whatever endeavor you will choose. And in the event that you will choose to apply in one of the fastest BPO companies in the Philippines, I would like to invite you to apply in EGS and the Lorica company because our doors are open for all of you. To all the PUPNs, let's create a size of smile together. Smart is very happy to have PUP graduates now enjoying their career and let them live more. Hashtag Sites to PUP. We will support you in more ways than one. Tara na, magkasama na tayo. 
mabuhay ang PUP. Noon pa man, malaki na ang naging bahagi ng mga kababaihan sa lipunang Pilipino. Kaisa sila sa marubdob na paghahangad ng kalayaan ng ating lahi. Kabilang sila sa paglinang ng ating makulay na sining at mayamang kultura. Kasapi sila sa pagtataguyod ng mga adhikain ng kapwa mamamayan at sa pagtugon sa mga pangangailangan ng lipunan. Katuwang sila sa pagtuklas sa mga larangan ng agham at medisina. Kapanalig sila sa pagpapairal ng batas, karapatan at katarungan para sa lahat. Kabahagi sila sa paglilingkod sa bayan at sa pagpapanatili ng demokrasyang Pilipino. Sa paglipas ng panahon, hindi nagmaliw ang kanilang pag-ibig sa ating inang bayan. Mga kababayan, ito ang alay ng mga kababaihang Pilipino para sa bayan. Tumayo po tayong lahat at sabay-sabay nating awitin ang pambansang awit ng Pilipinas. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good afternoon to everyone and welcome to Baliksintang Paaralan, the PUP Alumni Webinar Series 2023. So our event for today will surely give us a lot of learning about our topic, the PUP and experience as journey to self-discovery. 
It is my delight to be your MC today for this informative webinar. I am Mavel Binagarde. I hope you will find the program we have lined up for you to be fruitful and engaging. Allow me please to acknowledge our participants from the Zoom and FB live streaming. Hello po. Ayan. <laughs> Nakita ko na yung speaker natin. nag on na ng camera. Please. Hello everyone. Thumbs up nga. Kung naririnig ako, thumbs up. Everyone please. Patingin. Ayan, there. Si Jeric. Hello, good afternoon. Who else? There. Si Nicole. Ayan, ang dami, ang dami. For Maya, very active participants. Hello, good afternoon to you. Hello there from our uh, FB, uh, FB viewers. Good afternoon. Ayan, so before we continue, may I just share one of the objectives of this activity with everyone, especially sa ating participants. Kasi... Para sa inyo talaga po ito. So bakit nga ba tayo nandito? Okay? Gaano ba ito ka-importante? Right? Well, maliban sa libre at may certificate, certificate, no? One of its objectives is to inspire you by listening to the story of success, grit, and determination of our notable alumni so that you, our dear students, will be more motivated to continue being the best PUPian in your workplace to be or anywhere in the world. Worth it na ba? <laughs> Worth it na po ba na nandito tayo ngayon? Yes, definitely, right? So before we continue again with our program, I would like to know kung sino dito ang makakapagsabi na, hmm, I already discovered myself. Yung hindi naman nawala, pero may pag-self-discovery. Sino dito? Patingin? Wait lang. I-off ko lang yung speaker ng isa dito there. One more. You know, guys, I'm a one-man team today. <laughs> so, yan. Patingin ako, patingin ako. Worth it. Yan, worth it na no, worth it po. Woo, Sir JP. Oh, yeah, Sir JP yan. Yes, yeah, Sir JP yan. Kilala niyo yan. <laughs> right? Ayan. Yung hindi naman, alam natin, no? Meron pa ba ito? Heart reaction? Ayan. Yan. Okay, you know, it's very important of knowing yourself, right? Alam natin yan. You know why? Pero tanong niya pa rin ako, bakit? Bakit? Please type why. Bola! Ayan, sabi speaker natin. Salamat. So ask me why, guys. Ask me why it is very important in knowing yourself. Ask me why. Please type why. Yeah, there. Why? Why? Because, guys, discovering yourself will help you understand and accept who you are and why you do why you do what you do, right? Which improves self-esteem, communication, and relationships. Bonga, di ba? That is why this topic is very important because our speaker will talk about PUP and experience as journey to self-discovery. Interesting, right? And very timely. So let's bring it on. To kick off this afternoon's program, let us all listen to our university president delivers his opening remarks Dr. Manuel M. Mubi. Vice President for Student Services. A pleasant day to everyone. To our uh, executive officials, Dr. Semi Sarmiento, Vice President for Student Services, Deans and Directors, Professor uh, Floro Kindo, Assistant Vice President, to our uh, guest speakers, and most importantly, to our beloved students. Thank you for joining the Balik Sintang Paralan webinar series. Thank you to ARCDO for organizing and hosting this event, which provides a great opportunity for the university to continue to engage with our alumni. Our alumni as stakeholders will always play a role in fostering a culture of excellence at our university. Their voices are invaluable in pointing us in the right direction, being key contributors to their respective industries. And we recognize their role as our university's ambassadors. I believe that our alumni are always eager to give back to their alma mater. And this webinar series provides an excellent opportunity for them to do so. Thank you to all of our alumni guest speakers for taking the time to mentor your fellow scholar and bayan. 
Your many stories of tribulations and triumphs will undoubtedly inspire our students who want to follow your footsteps and use education to achieve success. Your presence here today sends a message of hope to all PUPians that despite many limitations, it is possible to rise and that success is within the reach with hard work, discipline, and drive. Okay, what just happened? <laughs> Let me see. What happened? Hindi natapos yung message ni Press. Wait, for a while. Ulitin natin yun. Dapat matapos natin yun. <laughs> okay. Allow me again to share with you the message of our president for everyone. With hard work, discipline, and drive. To all of okay. I think, I think nagkorap po siya. <laughs> but then again, I'll, uh, I'll share it with you. Yung sa Facebook natin, the message of our president, overall naman, siya po ay nagpapasalamat sa ating mga speakers and challenging our students to be like them, our notable alumni. Okay? So let's continue. Let us continue with our program. Thank you so much, President Muhi, for the heartwarming welcome remarks. Ayan. So before we get started... I'm going, uh, I'm going to go through some reminders to ensure the smooth flow of our webinar. Please, number one, please take note that your microphones and cameras are automatically turned off as you enter the Zoom meeting. Please, stay po natin nakamute ang ating microphone para po hindi natin maiistorbo ang ongoing program natin. Okay, thank you. Second, if you have questions for our speaker, please maximize the use of chat box, which can be found at the bottom section of the screen and comment section for our participants in the FB live streaming. Again, good afternoon sa ating uh, FB live uh, streaming viewers. Okay, third, make your question concise and direct, especially ang ating speaker ay very accommodating sa mga questions. Okay? Again, I remind ko lang yung number one natin, no? yung number one nating reminder. Please note, please continue, turn off the microphones unless later po sa question and answer natin ay ma-acknowledge po kayo na magtanong sa ating speaker. Thank you so much. So for continue, no? let's continue. Wait lang po. I will just mute yung participants natin na nakalimutan niya pong na mag-mute. Ayan. Okay. <laughs> to continue, by joining this activity, you agree to participate in a recorded webinar that will be posted on related platforms such as websites, social media pages, and others. Also, kindly have your name and what school or organization you are connected to in our Zoom meeting. Sixth, digital certificate will be released two to three weeks after the conduct and be given to those who attended participated, and completed the evaluation form at the end of the session. And lastly, kind of visit the PUP Alumni Facebook page and YouTube channel. Mm -hmm, meron tayong YouTube channel. The PUP Art TV, and don't forget to like and share the live stream video so that other students and alumni can also uh, learn and inspire by our webinar. I think everything is clear now, and we are ready to continue to our webinar. At alam ko, re uh, ready, ready na rin ang ating speaker, right? <laughs> okay, heart reaction again, heart reaction class there. O oh, class, di ba? Para talagang nasa online class lang talaga tayo dito. Eh. 
<laughs> There, I can see so many hearts on my screen. Hello, good afternoon. Sige, mag-shoutout uh, muna ako sa ibang participants na nandito. Hello, good afternoon, Luis Marie, Leonor, Martin, si Apple Grapes, yan. Si, si, uh, si Jaime, hello, good afternoon to you guys. Ayan. So, allow me. Let's continue na ha. Allow me everyone to introduce to you our keynote speaker for today's webinar. Hindi ko alam pero apakahirap naman pala mag-introduce ng speaker pag masyadong malapit sa puso mo ang ipapakilala mo. Hindi ko alam kung pahahabain ko o paiiksiin ko eh. Pero super fun kasi talaga ako nitong speaker natin. You know why? You know why? Sige, tanong niyo ako. Why? Ma'am, why? Please type why yan. Why? Why? Patanong naman ako, why? There, why? Kasi nga, ganito yun. Our speaker is a lecturer. Not just a lecturer, but an outstanding lecturer at Ateneo de Manila University and the Polytechnic University of the Philippines. He teaches courses on cultural studies, literature, and pedagogy. His projects are focused on post-colonialism, care theory, medical humanities, digital humanities, and pedagogy. In his free time, he likes to watch RPDR. At hinanap ko pa talaga yung meaning ng RPDR. Okay? RPDR means RuPaul's Drag Race. It is an American reality competition, uh, competition television series, the first in the, in the Drag Race franchise produced by World of Wonder for Logo TV. Interesting, right? Please correct me, sir, no, sir, JP, kung mali yung nakuha kong information, ha? <laughs> so, well, aside from RPDR, he also fond of watching anime and then cramming for his writing projects. The Zodiac sign is his guide to life, while reading books is his way of breathing life. Mahilig po talaga siya magbasa at magsulat. His career objectives are, first, to teach and share his expertise in the field of literary and culture, uh, cultural studies, second, to guide and lead students in their academic journey, and to make students realize and understand the value of art and its role in the progress of humanity. He finished his bachelor's degree well here, dito lang naman, at the Polytechnic University of the Philippines with a degree, Bachelor of Secondary Education major in English. Meron ba dito mga major in English? Kaway-kaway nga. Patingin nga ako, there, Jeric. Hello, Jeric. Mga English majors dito, ayan. <laughs> there. And his master's degree at the Ateneo de Manila University with a degree, Master of Arts, major in Literary and Cultural Studies. Publication-wise, napakarami. Hindi ko na isa-isahin kasi baka sabihin nyo, ako na yung speaker dito, but I will name a few, okay? <laughs> Power the Pedagogical Criticism. The text, the teacher, and the global crisis in teaching health and illness literature, and the care literacy framework. Isang pagsusuri sa pagtuturo ng panitikang pangbata gamit ang ang tatay ni Clara at nanay ni Erwin. Uh, Na-curious talaga ako kung ano si tatay ni Clara, kung sino si tatay ni Clara at sino naman ang nanay ni Erwin. At ang ikak, ikaklit sa aming hardin. Wow. So well, aside from publication, Uh, he also presented many of his works, some of which, ito po, the suffix sound, the construction of lesbian desires and figures in selected OPMs, and, ayan, Sinira Ang Bain, a critic on women's uh, representation of well-being in selected Philippine literature. Through the years of his experience and his passion for teaching, he has proven exceptional academic leadership and team leading ability and was commended for some awards. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my great pleasure to introduce to you our keynote speaker for today. Let us give a hard reaction to my friend, Sir John Paulo Sarce. Good afternoon, Sir JP. Good afternoon po. Oh, wait, <laughs> <laughs> thank you po, thank you po. Maraming salamat, Mama Bell. Pero po, sa katotohanan, gusto ko lang po talagang maging housewife. <laughs> Pero maraming salamat po sa pag-appreciate at sa napaka-generous sa pagpapakilala, Mama Bell. I wouldn't be here without my teachers in PUP, my mentors in PUP, and that includes you, Mama Bell, as well. So thank you very much po. Ayan. 
So um, allow me first to share my screen. Wait lang. Kasi may nakasag. <laughs> Yan. Um, uh, I share. There. Okay. So, um, pa-hardly act na lang kung nakikita niyo yung uh, presentation on your end. If it's visible on your end. Maraming salamat. Yan. So, my talk today, which I hope na hindi maging TED Talk or maging graduation speech. <laughs> as I mean, my, my MA this year as well. But I hope this would be more of a uh, a lecture wherein we can all somehow relate into since we are all from PUP naman, no? And I still, I'm still with PUP at the moment. So, uh, this is a lecture entitled The PUP and Experience as a Journey to Self-Discovery, no? But first, allow me to greet everybody. Good afternoon. Thank you very much for being here with us today. I know that medyo bad ang weather, so to be with you here in spite of the, the weather, uh, means already a lot. And I know some of you also have their classes, but perhaps multitasking to be here and to listen to the lecture. So thank you very much for that effort. And allow me also to thank the ARDO, no, the Office of Mama Bell, for having me as their um, uh, research speaker for today, colleagues, co-teachers, and uh, students. There. Thank you very much for being here today. There. So allow me to begin first by just quickly telling you the outline of my lecture talk today, which would first have its introduction just to, to unpack some words that I use in the title. Then, syempre, personal experience of that personal journey. And then I will leave you some of my favorite uh, or currently three words that I'm working in Filipino as part of research that I'm doing at the same time as part of knowing more of who I am at the moment. So in 2010, I enrolled in the P Polytechnic University of the Philippines to pursue a Bachelor of Secondary Education major in English. It was a significant milestone for me as I was part of the pioneering batch of the SED program at PUP. When I first entered PUP, my perspective on education was shaped by my provincial background and of bringing in Bulacan, as a Bulacan myself. In this brief discussion, I would like to share my personal experiences at PUP, followed by three Filipino terms that encapsulate my journey of self-discovery within the university. Before dwelling into those terms, let me provide a definition of what the PUP experience means to me. For me, the PUP experience embodies the nominal cost of education, which was only 12 pesos per unit during my time. That was like roughly um, 12, 13 years ago, or even the pre tuition fee for the current time that all of you enjoys. It represents an educational environment that caters to the masses, making quality education accessible to all. Kaso, we all know that our buildings are being renovated and it's for greater good naman. Okay? In this context, ha, uh, okay, current time, it represents an educational environment that caters to the masses, making quality education accessible to all. In this context, how does self-discovery manifest within the PUP experience? Within the PUP experience, it takes the form of profound exploration that goes beyond personal growth and extends into the realm of collective struggles and social class. Self-discovery in the PUP experience encompasses a journey of understanding oneself in relation to others. It goes beyond the individualistic pursuits of individualistic pursuits and encompasses a commitment to serving the needs of the wider society. This discovery is rooted in the challenges faced by the masses and an ongoing struggle for social justice and equality. It involves recognizing the interconnectedness of our personal growth with the welfare of our communities and nation, a true embodiment of gagamitin ang karunungan mula sa iyo Para sa bayan. My personal uh, experience at PUP, I, in my personal experience at PUP, I discovered the true meaning of survival and advocacy. I believe that this defines my PUP and experience. I can vividly recall when one of my uncles heard that I have been accepted into PUP and planned to pursue my college degree there. 
He jokingly said, ayos yan, daming aktivista dyan. Which may make question, why being an activist was seen as a negative thing? As I began my first semester at TUP, my Filipino teacher, Mom Emmy Layos, welcomed our class by saying, welcome to the jungle, providing us with an overview of the challenges we would face during our four years at TUP. She also emphasized that we have the freedom to choose our own path in expressing, expressing and engaging in activism. This introduction to activism resonated with me and made me realize that there are different forms of activism, all of which are valid ways of expressing dissent. Our dissent as students is a valid and can contribute to the broader, broader mass movements. After two years, PUP provided me with a summer job where I assisted students during enrollment. This role allowed me to orient students about the enrollment process and promote my course in College of Education. It was during this time that I had the opportunity to interact with other future colleagues who were teaching or had taught in PUP. These are such Mom Mela Jimenez, Mom Dani Ayun, Mom Camille Bistan, and the late Sir Joseph. I engage with conversation, I engage in conversation with them about the significance of taking up course and the importance of teaching as a form of changing the system, if not the direct descent. And those discussions still hold through to this day, just like when they were still beginning to enroll at PUP. I used to frequently say, proud ako ng public school, mula elementary hanggang high school. At naniniwala ako sa kalidad na kaya ng public school, kaya pinili po ang PUP. I took an immense pride in being PUP yan because I knew that as a student, PUP and face enormous challenges, yet we possess the strength to overcome them and shine brightly. During my time, I don't have a laptop. And then my classes would end around 6 p.m. at Teres at, at PUP. And then meron kami makilangan submit the following day. Then uuwi pa ako ng Bulacan. So what would I do is I really spent my last remaining money to go to the computer shops in the Teresa to finish the outputs that my teachers would use, would ask us to submit. I remember laboring late nights and being worried makaka-uwi pa ako ng Bulacan. And nakaka-uwi naman ako ng Bulacan. <laughs> But it's a struggle, uh, anxiety and all na, na salat, salat ng mga estudyante at karamihan na nag-aaral sa PUP at ganun pa rin yung mga estudyante ko ngayon despite na may pre-education act. Every year, I share this sentiment with incoming freshmen at PUP aiming to impart to them the essence of PUP and experience and values. During my final years at PUP, I wholeheartedly dedicated myself to student activism. On those days, when I wasn't busy participating in events or organizing meetings, I engaged myself in various extracurricular activities. One of these activities involved conducting a seminar workshop for students, student leaders who volunteer for HIV and AIDS awareness campaign. This workshop opened my eyes to the devastating impact of crisis and made me realize the profound significance of the rising number of deaths and cases we observe in these statistics. I think during my time, it's like the third wave or second wave of the HIV and AIDS crisis. Um, I remember friends uh, who will be hospitalized um, and it felt like the numbers that I was looking that time when I was fourth year or third year college, hindi lang siya number, totoo siyang buhay. And as a student leader, we were given the chance to be aware of this and uh, contribute to spreading awareness on the situation. Since that day, I have become more vocal about gender issues in our society, which later served as an inspiration for my master's degree thesis. I have vivid memories of joining my friends from political organization in rally at, Luquet, at, at Luneta. We were, were, we, were we boys or descent? against the pork battle scam. As we sat together on pavement, witnessing people from various political organization, affiliation, and even ideologies coming together, I whispered to myself, ngayito pala ang rally. It was a moment of realization as we observed individuals united in a passionately expressing their dissent for the betterment of society. After a few months, I embarked my pre-service teaching journey where I had the opportunity to teach public school students in Quezon City, I countered students who had to be absent from school to work and, as, and students who came from challenging backgrounds. Meanwhile, our lawmakers indulged in the funds they acquitted from our taxes. It struck me deeply to witness the struggle of my students, since of whom couldn't even afford 
a daily allowance or their baon and studied in classroom without projectors. Um, it really, galing na akong public school, kaya alam ko eh. Pero, yung tipong galing ka na ng college, so you kind of see a different environment, dun babalik ka doon sa so sitwasyon na ganun. Nakakapang, nakakapanghina siya ng tuhod to know that there are people with lump sum of money using it for their cars, using it for their properties that could have been used for for the education system of our country. Um, my experience with PUP really solidified that critical lens to me. And um, this experience has resonated closely with what I had encountered during my time at PUP. My final year at PUP combined with pre-service teaching experience further fueled my passion and advocacy for a better education system. It threatened my advocacy to work towards, sorry, to work towards improving the quality of education and ensuring that every student, regardless of their background, has the access to equal opportunities. I'll just quickly share this as well. When, I, uh, when the pandemic happened, and I'm still teaching in PUP, um, may isa kong student na graduating, wala siyang cellphone. And um, the problem is, okay lang kung modular, but she is already a fourth year student and she needs to do pre-service teaching. Luckily, I have friends who directly work under the former office of DPLN. Um, Siyempre, PUP yan to PUP yan. Tayo-tayo lang din naman mga tatna mo yan. Um, that student was able to get a phone and she was able to continue her pre-service teaching through the office of vice, the former Vice President, Lenny Robredo. Iba yung bigat sa pakiramdam pagka nakikita mong nagihirap ang estudyante. Because I also teach in a quite well-off university, to be honest, that the, the, the police, the Jesuits, would provide for their students. But when you hear the story firsthand from your students, wala daw siyang cellphone kasi yung cellphone naging nagamit niya, gagamitin ng mom niya, and yung mom niya nagtatrabaho niya. So wala siyang magamit sa pag uh, o OJT. And as someone na may access, as someone na may kakilala, I tried my best also to help her out because I know the experience of being helpless. And I, as she said, thank to me, ang sabi ko lang sa kanya, when you become a teacher someday, as you will be, and a student like you have a problem or, you know, in, in the same situation, do not deny them the chance of getting help. Help them as well. Yun dun mo ko mapapasalamatan. Ganun lang din natin mapapaikot yung pagiging mabuti natin sa kapwa as we continue ourselves to be kind to others as well. So during my final months at PUP, I experienced a great joy when I secured a teaching position at Our Lady of Fatima University. Two months before my official graduation, hired na ako. Kasi kung napanood niyo ako yun eh, siya sabi sa mga video, gusto talaga nila ang mga taga-PUP. So my classmates are still searching on jobs para ako magmamarcha na ako, okay na ako, may trabaho na ako and all. I dedicated the next three years of my life to all four. Serving as a teacher, class advisor, club advisor, and even as one of the vice principals or school coordinators. However, an opportunity arose when I was offered a job in scholarship at Ateneo, which led me to leave all four after several years of teaching the grade school and high school students. At Ateneo, I work as a graduate assistant, receiving a pre-tuition fee and allowance, while also I started to, continue, I started to teach in PUP. It was the time of Dr. Rosales when I entered PUP, and she was the dean. I joined my best friend, Sir John Amian Rivera, with the faculty of uh, Department of Elementary and Secondary Education, together with um, other faculties, uh, like my teacher in math, which is Mom Rural, uh, my teacher in several subjects, Sir Gipila, Mom Celine, um, and then uh, Mom Medrano, uh, my, uh, my, my org advisor by that time is Mom Mabel. Mom Mabel is my org advisor <laughs> uh, at Best Society. No? So I joined them when I entered PUP after four or, or, or five years. Okay? After a couple of years, I was lucky enough to be hired as one of the junior faculty of Ateneo. Initially, I was hired to teach Filipino with the endorsement of Dr. Jaya Jacobo and Dr. Gary Davis. And when the pandemic struck, I moved to the English department with the approval of Dr. Priscilla Cruz and recommendation from my thesis advisor, uh, Professor D.M. Reyes. Despite juggling multiple jobs, including the challenges posed by the pandemic, I preserved and completed my master's degree 
at Ateneo after nearly eight years. Throughout my journey, I have gleaned invaluable lessons from various institutions, but it was PUP that equipped me to overcome challenges and adversities. PUP nurtured me, nurtured me the virtues of patience, resourcefulness, commonly referred as discarding, and above all, it instilled me a sense of humility. Regardless of the school I have attended or been with, my foundational experience of self-discovery at PUP remained deeply ingrained. The knowledge I acquired from PUP is not solely for personal gain. It is meant to be shared with society, serving a greater purpose. These philosophies also extend to my life and career, particularly in the realm of research and writing. Many of my research publications revolve around gender and education. For instance, I have recently published an artic articles in reputable journals like Malay Journal and DSL, DLSU, De La Salle, exploring, teacher, is exploring teaching of gender and sexuality using children's book, as well as UNITAS Journal of UST, discussing the teaching of literature during the pandemic. My other works dwell into topics such as migrants and gender, teaching and digital humanities, teaching and medical humanities. This publication span a range of outlets from Scopus Index Journal to locally published ones. However, whenever I write, I ask myself, for who, whom I, am I writing? Who will benefit from this? The answer remains the same since my student days, para sa bayan. These ongoing projects I am currently working on delve into the decoloniality of gender, exploration of representation of locally queer figures, such as Bakla, in the era of sensationalized lean pretty gay boys. I'm, I am also engaged with writing about teaching Philippine literature in multiple, multicultural setting and examining the intersection of gender and martial law. In undertaking these projects, I constantly remind myself, Again, for whom am I writing? The answer remains unchanged from the PUP hymn, Mula Sayo Para Sa Bayad. This philosophy not only drives my activism, but also fuels my teaching and research endeavors. Teaching at a state university like PUP and dwelling into cultural studies enabled me to equip students with critical terms and enhance their critical thinking skills. This is essential for the future generation to effect change within the system. Similarly writing, similarly, writing studies and articles that challenge gender biases and assess educational practices aim to assist teachers and school administrators in improving their systems. To me, this is a form of dissemination, but not just a mere transmission of knowledge. It is a dis dissemination of dissent. As I end this short speech, I want to, I want to impart three favorite Tagalog, Tagalog words, my three favorite Tagalog words which is karunungan, kasarian, kagalingan, kasarian at kagalingan. And please allow me to discuss this in my mother tongue, which is Tagalog. Karunungan ng unang saita na bumuo sa PUP experience ko. Ito ang saitang nagpakilala sa akin ng saiksay ng sarili para sa bayan. Ito rin ang salitang parating kaakibat ng profesyon o bilang guro sa pamantasan. Ngunit sa tagal ko sa PUP, ang karunungan na ito ay hindi pang sarili, kundi para din sa lahat. Lagi kong sinasabi tulad na nabanggit ko kanina na produkto ako ng public school mula elementary hanggang high school at maging kolehiyo. Nung nakapagtapos lang naman ako, nang nakapagtapos lang naman ako ay napag-aral ng sarili at nakakuha ng discount at scholarship sa Ateneo. Pero nais kong bigyan ng bitin ang pagiging produkto ng public school dahil kaaktibat nun ang realidad na natapos ko ang pag-aaral ko sa bansang ito dahil sa kontribusyon ng mga manggagawang uri mula magsasaka, guro, doktor, driver, factory worker, mangingisda. Lahat ng mga taong nagbabayad ng tax mula income tax hanggang ibat na pasan ng lahat. Kaya't sa pananatili ko sa sinkang paaralan, dito rin ang parati kong pangalan sa aking mga mag-aaral. Karunungan ang pangalawang salita. Uh, ay, yun na pala pala. Sorry, sa karunungan pala. Karunungan din ang saysay ng aking pagsusulat. Karunungan, hindi pang sarili, ngunit para sa bayan. Sa ditong paraan na rin na ihahayag ang notion ni Stuart Hall, isang critical scholar ng culture study sa UK, patungkol sa organic intellectual. 
hango sa kaalaman at sulat na rin ng isa pang scholar na si Gramsci. Sa nosyon na ito, may responsibilidad ng isang organikong intelektual na lumayo mula sa pamamaraan ng isang tradisyonal na intelektual, baguhin ang pamamaraan ng toring da rin, basagi ng pader nito at ipakalat sa ibang miyembro ng lipunan ang karunungan na inaaral at sinusuri nito. Dinidistong ka na isang organikong intelektual ang pader na nagahati sa lipunan sa pamamagitan ng pamamahagi at ng karunungan para sa bayan. Hindi ba't ganito rin ang adikain pa ulit-ulit natin inaawit sa ating imno sa PUP. Sa pangalawang salita, ito ay kasarian. No, ang pangalawang salita naman ay may lapit sa aking puso bilang membro ng komunidad ng LGBTQIA+. At ito ay kasarian. Minsan, natanong ako ng foreigner kong estudyante, ano raw ang paborito kong salita? Siyempre, kasarian ang sagot ko. Ayon sa KWF, ang kahulugan ng kasarian ay katangi ang pinagkakakilandan kung babae o lalaki ng isang tao. Ngunit, kung aalamin ang kahulugan ng salitang ugat nito na sari, ito ay nangangahulugan ng anumang iba't ibang bagay na tinipon at pinagalo. At kung ulitin naman, ay magiging sari-sari. Iba-ibang bagay, katipunan ng mga bagay na may iba't ibang uri. Kung titignan, paulit-ulit na kaakibat ng salitang kasirian mula sa salitang ugat nito ang permu- at sa permutasyon nito ang nosyon ng iba-iba at halo-halo na lagi kong ginagamit na lente sa pagtingin ng kasarian. Na, Napaka-inklusibo na wikang meron tayo kung tutusin. At ito ay nananalaytay sa ating pagka-Pilipino. Halimbawa na lang, ang paggamit ng panghalip na paggamit ng panghalip na siya, paggamit ng panghalip na siya, akin, kanya. Sa Ingles, ang mga panghalip na ito ay gender-based. Her, she, uh, her, she, him, he, right? ay napaka-gender-based. Ngunit sa Pilipino, ito inklusibo sa lahat ng kasarian. Hindi ba't kay gandang yakapi ng wikang hindi kakinakahon o hindi kinakahon ang tao sa isang paniniwala at norm na nagmula pa sa nakaraang siglo. Ang salitang kasarian rin ang laging paksa ng aking mga sinisuri sa research o di kay tinuturo sa loob ng silig-aralan. Hayaan yung ibahagi ko rin dito ang isa sa linya, isang linya ayon sa isa sa mga paborito kong queer scholars na si Eve Sajwik. According to her, I think that for many of us in childhood, the ability to attach intently to a few cultural objects, objects of high or popular culture or both, objects whose meaning seem mysterious, excessive, or oblique in relation to the foods and readily available to us became a prime resource for survival. We need for there, we needed for we needed for there to be the sites where the meanings didn't line up tightly with each other. We need to learn to invest those sites with fascination and love. Pinapaliwanag ni Sedge Week rito na kung paano ang pagiging bakla o lesbiana o kung sino pa mang membro ng, ng komunidad o ang pakiramdam ng pagiging iba mula sa pagkabata ay nabubuhay at nagsusurvive sa malupit at nakakasakal na kapiligiran habang tumatila. Aniya, kumahanap tayo ng maliliit na bagay, mapakartoon man yan o kahit poster halimbawa ng sex bomb at dito natin binubuhos ang pantasya at pangarap na makaalpas sa restriktradong pamumuhay sa loob ng patriarkal na lipunan na kung saan ang maliliit o katiting na kabahalaan o pagkalesbiana pag namamataan ng nakakatanda kundi pisikal na pangaabuso ay verbal na pangaabuso ang kanilang sinusuli. Kailan pa nga ba naging masama ang pagiging totoo sa sarili at kailan pa nga ba naging mahirap mahalin ng taong nagpapakatotoo lamang para sa sarili para mas lalong mahalin pa ang sarili. Lahat tayo ay may kasarian at lahat din tayo ay may danas ng dahas mula rito. Kaya halimbawa, sa usapin ng Soji Bill at kung dapat mag ipatapad dito, lalo, ma- lalo na ngayong buwan ng Pride Month, ang sagot ay oo. Lahat tayo ay maaaring maging biktima ng karahasan at diskriminasyon. Ang ang may hi- Uh, at ang ating may hiling na lamang no, na ang ating mga mambabatas o politiko ay maging gaya, gaya ni Mayor Joy na may pagkiling at kalinga sa miyembro ng mga LGBT sa miyembro ng LGBTQIA+ community. Isang malaking hakbang ang kanyang programang healthcare card para maibsan kahit paano ang inequality ang inequality pagdating sa usapin ng kasarian at kalusugan. Para naman sa huling salita 
para na masuling salita ay ito ay kagalingan. Isang salita na aking inaaral sa kasalukuyan bilang parte ng panaliksik ko din sa medical humanities. Ang salitang ito ay nangangahulugan ng kabutihan, kausayan, kapakanan. At di naman lingid sa ating kaalaman na ito din naman ang mitiin ng sintang paaralan. Makapagturo ng mga mag-aaral at maarok ang kausayan ng kabutihan. The excellence na katulad nga nang nabanggit kanina ni President. No? Ngayon, gusto ko din tingnan ang salitang ito mula sa idea ng galing. Nang, na ang salitang ugat o ang salitang ugat na may kahulugan na kahusayan sa anumang gawain, hindi karaniwan, at pagbuti na, o muling paglakas ng may sakit. Kawalan ng sakit o karamdaman. So nagahalo no, yung notion ng, ng, ng magaling as an excellent and magaling as in well-being sa salitang ito. Sa panahon kung saan katatapos lang ng tatlong taong lockdown, Ngunit patuloy pa rin tayong ginagambala ng COVID at ng mutation nito. Paano nga ba tayo gagaling mula dito? Gagaling, gagaling dahil gagamitin ang masaklap na nakaraan? Gagaling dahil gagamitin ang masaklap na nakaraan upang umusad bilang isang nasyon at lipunan. May mas maaga at lipunan na may mas maaga na aksyon at critical na pag-unawa sa pandemya. Habang tumataas na rin ang kaso ng HIV cases sa bansa, idagdag pa natin ang problema sa presyo ng bilihin at kaliwat ka ng paglindol o pag-alboroto ng mga vulkan, paano nga ba tayo gagaling mula dito? At naisip rin ba natin kung anong mangyayari sa ating pagkatapos ng lockdown, pandemya at sakuna? Hindi masusolusyonan ng red tagging at paglipad ng helicopter ang mga sularin nyo ito. Dahil matapos man ang mga pangyayari nito, Mag-iiwan ito ng trauma sa ating kamalayan bilang Pilipino. Sa ganang akin, sa ganang akin, upang makanta ng kagalingan na ito, kailangan nating maging inklusibo at matalino. Gamitin ang karunungan at maging matab- mapagtanggap sa kapwa. Pandayin ang panahon ng pakitibaka para mas masaga, para sa mas masaga ng kinabukasan. Para sa lahat din, para sa lahat din natin makakantan para sa sorry para sa lahat doon natin makakamtan ang kagalingan at kung maihahatid din natin panglip natin panglipunan katarungan din kung maihahatid din natin ang panglipunan katarungan doon din magsisimula ang paggaling at paghilom mula sa trauma ng nakaraan so if we really like to move forward we need to acknowledge these traumas in our society that includes better healthcare system, better response to um, disasters that we commonly experience, and better social justice. So, kaya sa pagkatapos ng lekturang ito, nais po ulitin ang ating paalala sa mga PUPian na serve the people. Pero dagdagan natin, change and challenge the system to better serve the people. Ang karunungan mula sa sintang paaralan ang magdadala sa atin ng higit ng pagtakakilanlan sa tunay na sarili. Isang uri ng pagtukla sa sarili, hindi para lang sa sarili, kundi para sa bayan. Yun lamang po, maraming salamat. Ayan, thank you so much. Naglalaga ko, no? Thank you so much, sir. For the plenty of food for thought, Sir JP, for discussing, uh, well, obviously, gender and development related topic in this webinar. Actually, first time namin, Sir, dito to experience na makapag-discuss yung ating alumni, notable alumni, about gender and development topic. Okay. Gusto ko rin lang i-share, no? Yung tumatak sa akin from the discussion, karunungan ay hindi para sa pansariling kagalingan, kundi para maipamahagi ito sa ating kasambayanan. O, di ba? <laughs> Naidugtong ko. <laughs> May realization din talaga with this, uh, with this, no? Thank you so much, sir. Now, how about our participants? May gusto bang mag-share ng kanilang takeaway sa lecture? Anyone? Raise po tayo ng hand using the raising hand icon sa ating Zoom para ma-recognize. At pwede po tayo mag-unmute para makapag-share sa atin regarding sa lecture ni Sir JP. I can see heart reaction, sir, sa ating live FB live stream. Ayan. Hello, good afternoon, Lorenza James, Lenlin, Arlene. Good afternoon to you guys there sa FB natin. Meron bang gustong mag-share ng kanilang takeaways? 
Napaka-active nito si ano eh. Eto, eto. Thank you, sir. Sorry, say happy pride po. Their heart reactions from some of our viewers here in Zoom. Ayan, another heart reaction. Shining heart reaction. <laughs> okay. Ayan. Thank you, thank you. Wait lang. May nakikita akong very active sa ating, ano sir, sa ating Zoom. Gusto ko lang uh, marinig ang kanyang thought about the topic. May I call on Jeric? Hi, good afternoon, Jeric. 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 Good afternoon po, ma'am. Good afternoon. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. Napatawa ako, napaka-active mo. Sige. Can you please share yung kahit konting pad lang about related doon sa topic? Related lang po doon sa topic. Um, I love yes. this talk po because we got to see his experiences in PUP. And unlike sa amin, sa kanila may 12 pesos payment pa po nun. Pero kahit na ganun po ka-low ang um, ano natin, ang um, tuition, totoo po yung sinabi niya na hindi pa rin mawawala yung hirap ng pag-aaral kasi kasama po dun yung devices, lalo na ngayon, may pandemic na po. So, gusto ko i-quote yung sinabi ni Sir kanina na do not deny them of the chance of getting help. So, I love that part po. <laughs> Some days, Sir Sarce, uh, babalik din po namin yan sa aming students. And yung sa kaalaman, yung sa kasarian, at yung mga words po na sinare nyo sa amin, uh, yun lang. Uh, I love them po, yung explanation nyo. Sana, ano, kami thank rin you, po. Thank you, thank you so much. <laughs> mga pag-share din po kami of na intense na <laughs> Yes! <laughs> Of no, course, okay. i-push natin yan, Jeric, no? <laughs> sige, sige, mag-ano ka, may gusto kang i-say hi to everyone, to your friends. Ito, oh, <laughs> chini-cheer ka ni Melbert. <laughs> Go, Jewick, sabi niya. <laughs> so, do not deny them the chance of getting help. Napaka, napakagandang linya. Thank you, Jeric. Okay, ngayon, meron ba tayong tanong? Pumunta na tayo sa question and answer. Meron na ba tayo? Meron pa ba? Ayan na yan. O, oh, Sir JP, gumagante. Jeric, nag-raise ng hand. Okay, Jeric. Curious lang po ako, sir. Ano po yung major decisions na nagawa nyo this year na parang challenging siya? Ano ba? <laughs> major child. Uh, 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 uh. Ayaw ko muna sabihin kasi baka mausog. <laughs> Uh, pero kasi I don't think it's major yung second to the major na lang sir not so major <laughs> muna <laughs> uh, kasi um, galing tayo ng lockdown right we're still in pandemic nagkasakit din ako during that time I just finished my thesis it took me four years to complete this thesis about HIV and AIDS as well um and writing a research and writing thesis is never an easy job because you really put so much of your energy, your brain into what you're writing. Not just the, the content itself, but even the style of writing it. I felt that um, my journey into, into grad school is never an easy journey. Um, uh, and I want this, and my decision is that this year, that this is going to be my year of healing, a journey of healing for myself as well. I think kasi parang na, na, lahat naman tayo pumupunta sa school at lahat tayo vulnerable sa pressure, sa trauma, sa violence na available din within the school. And siguro isang aspect din yun ng pagkatuto, wala din nagtuturo sa atin sa paaralan kung paano natin tutulungan, paano natin stress management, paano natin tutulungan yung well-being natin, and I believe isa yung isang major decision ko this year to help myself to heal from all of the traumas that I gained from the last past three years, including relationship. Char! <laughs> Pero yun. And since meron din tayo mga bisag dito, BED, may mga schools in America na pag kayo mga bata na napupunta sila sa away sa gulo, ang solution ng school is not to put them into guidance but to teach them mindfulness teach them Zen, teach them Buddhism, para nakokontrol nila yung agayon. That's also a process of way of healing and controlling one, oneself. And siguro kung yung ganun, matagal na siyang natuturo sa atin, diba? 
baka mas magiging kalmado ang mga tao or mas kaya natin tulungan din yung sarili natin makaalpas sa mga nananasa natin. Hindi lang resilient ng resilient, kundi meron tayong moments of healing as well. So this year, yun yung isa sa gusto kong ibigay sa sarili ko. It's quite challenging kasi I have a lot of projects as well. Writing projects na hindi natatapos. <laughs> I have an upcoming, siguro yung isa pa, um, I have an upcoming book project, a textbook with a major publication for senior high school. And that's a big one as well. Um, I have another one, an international about uh, about gate culture. So mostly ng mga decision ko is on career. and But at the same time, I would like to balance it with myself. So siguro yun, yung, yung healing and at the same time, yung mga tinanggap kong writing projects. So yung mga mabibigat and challenging decisions na ginawa ko this year at this early point. <laughs> Thank you, thank you so much, Sir JP. Thank you, Jeric. Ayan. <laughs> so talaga namang na, yung passion talaga ni Sir sa writing and reading ay dumadayo pang international din talaga. Congratulations, Sir JP. Meron pa po ba tayong tanong from our audience? Ayan, may nag-raise pa ng hand, Sir. Oh, Hi. Hi, Hi, Melbert. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Melbert. Good afternoon. Hello there. Po. Pero wait lang. <laughs> Ay, hi ko muna yung mga nasa Facebook natin watching. Hello, Lara Balesteros, bn for one d and also Angela Cruz. Go, Jerry uh, Kalam, no? Sabi niya. Okay. Hi, Malbert. Balik ako sa'yo. Sige, ibato yes, mo na po. yung question mo kay Sir JP. <laughs> yes, wow. Uh, hello po. Good afternoon po, Mama Bell. And also, of course, to our Sir Sars. Yes. Na-miss po namin yung class with <laughs> ano po, Sir. <laughs> Happy Pride po, Sir. <laughs> Ayan po. Ang question ko po is, Bilang gusto maging housewife ni Sir, sino po ang gusto maging husband? <laughs> Kimi. <laughs> Yung lang po. <laughs> gusto ko lang, ito yung gulit ko. Ito na po, serious na, Sir. <laughs> Ay nga po, yung pinaka uh, tumatak sa aking line ni Sir uh, is yung last line po niya, which is yung uh, um, something related with challenging the system. And I know, uh, we know how important that is po. And um, na-remember ko lang po, um, meron po kami encounter sa isang um, prof din po namin na, na nag-advise po sa amin sa class po namin na ano, wag daw po mag-engage. Uh, when we become a teacher daw po, um, as a teacher, do not engage to politics. Po. Basta po, um, the bottom line of uh, that advice, as, uh, as far as I could remember, is to not be uh, you know, vocal or to not be too vocal uh, regarding politics. So, yun nga po, Sir Sars, eh, um, I just like to know your take rin po dito po sa, sa aspect na to and um, paano po kami magiging, um, magiging catalyst as teacher po when it comes to challenging the system. Thank you. All right. I, I totally get where you're coming from and I totally get where the question is coming from. But to answer the first part of the question, gusto ko talaga, <laughs> gusto ko talaga maging house, so hindi mo may PhD ako, so titinan na ako ng palamig sa labas ng school. Kasi mo namin ako pera, namin ako house man na mayaman. <laughs> Ganun na lang gusto ko sa buhay. <laughs> Pero um, this is quite nitty-gritty, a murky discussion and often being resurfaced whenever there's an election on to what extent a teacher can be um, active in her or his um, um, profession. In one of the books that I have read, sabi doon nung isang social science teacher, she dreamed of becoming a teacher because teaching is a form of social activism. You teach students to, to vision a future. You teach students to, to change the system. You teach the students to become, to become enablers of a better progressive society. Um, like what I said earlier, Mom Laios said to us now, you decide what form of activism you would like to do. Um, if you find that there are certain roadblocks or um, limits with your span, because you have to protect yourself when you become a teacher as well. Ayun naman natin na matanggalan din kayo ng trabaho. So you have to navigate it in this system to somehow survive there as well. And as a way of surviving there, make it or do your changes as well from that. So, when it comes to, say, for example, national issues, um, politics, and all, broader issues, I think wala namang batas na nagbabawal na sa mag-engage doon, though we are bounded by our ethics and our duty. So you you can only do it in the most discreet way that you can do. 
either you share other people's sentiments, sharing of news, debate news, diba? reading it, being aware of it, and then advocating um, important values in your class like integrity, honesty, paying tax, as they um, um, always being ano, on time in paying what you have to pay, <laughs> diba? um, generosity, Yeah, so by inculcating to your this values to your students, we hope that they realize that when they get out of our classroom, they would see that ah, ito paling tinuturo sa akin ng bata ko. So kung kung yung teacher ko nga ito yung bini-imbibe sa akin values, makita ko boboto ng ganitong tao. You you you, 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 you because may meron din man tayong mga unions and teachers are teachers have the rights to have their own union din naman, ba? Diba? And currently, this is a hot topic kasi I believe may nilabas ang DepEd na nagpa-profile ng mga teachers na members ng act and that is against the law itself. So, um, you just have to know where you're coming from, assess ano yung pwede mong gawin at ano yung hindi mo pwede gawin. Pero hindi po pwede mong wala kang gawin. That's the idea. So, how to survive it in that and how to navigate with that. The thing is, Um, when we talk about being vocal kasi, hindi lang yung ta 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 It's a discussion. It is something that you would like to open to your superior, perhaps, or to your colleague, diba? but not to a point of awayan or siraan and so on, but a discussion, a healthy discussion. We have to find a point where in expressing dissent is not necessarily a form of Uh, of breaking your relationship with other people. Kasi hindi yun yung, hindi yun yung goal ng movement. Ang goal ng movement, magpalaki, magparami. ba? Diba? At yun din naging nire-reiterate for example, ni, ng former Vice President Matthew, no? So, we have to, if we are bounded by certain responsibility, if we are bounded by certain no, we have to find our way to continue our values our social activism because that's that's already like part of our right to speak diba? okay and then know your rights as a teacher when you become a teacher okay know the limits of that that includes you cannot impose ideologies to to them that's the thing na nakasulit sa, sa magna carta diba? you cannot impose them um to join this to join that or to be But what we can do is to sharpen their critical thinking. No? It, uh, you, you, you present them data, you present them facts, you present them um, issues, you make them analyze that. Kasi syempre, pagka, tsaka isipin nyo din, pagka you are imposing ideologies, you're imposing um, these issues to your student, nagiging spunted siya. Hindi din nagiging critical yung bata. So hindi siya nag-go in two ways. So mas maganda talaga na we challenge them to think. And then by challenging to think, they can think better ways and better solutions to the problems that they might experience. So when I said that challenge and change the system, it means opening up conversation with other people to the issues that we all experience. Because, say for example, when Maharli Kapan fails, lahat tayo dami-dami doon. And if we are not going to talk about it, wala tayo mahahanap na solution doon. So it's very important to express dissent as a form of communicating and opening up discussion to the people behind it. So, yun lang. I, I, we have to destigmatize lang din kasi siguro yung, yung forms of our um, movements or expressions against or dissent to other people. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Melbert. Thank you, Sir JP. There. Basahin ko lang, no? May bago yata tayong message sa Zoom. Ayan. Ang haba na pala. <laughs> okay. Sabi ni Jeric, challenge, the, uh, challenge and change the system means opening up the issues to other people. Also from Gracia, sabi nga po sir na mas pinaniniwalaan daw ng mga students ang kanilang mga teachers rather than any other human figures in their lives. Correct. Okay. I agree with that. Indeed po, teachers have the biggest influence to every life of youth and students. Thank you so much. And from Melbert, could not agree more po. Thank you so much, Sir Sarse. Ayan. And sa Facebook natin, sabi ni Angela, napaka-active ng BSED EN31N. Go, Ate Mel. <laughs> o di ba, napaka-active nila. <laughs> okay. Meron pa po bang tanong? Meron pa ba? May mag-raise pa ba ng hand dito? 
ayan na, nag, nag-PPM na si Sir Sarce, stop asking questions. <laughs> But anyway, ayan, I think everything is clear and our PUPians were inspired already and learned from your talk, Sir JP. Everyone, may I request again to give our speaker a clap reaction for generously sharing his thought on the topic, PUP and experience as journey to self-discovery. Ayan. Palakpak. Thank you so much from the bottom of our hearts. Thank you so much, sir. Mabuhay kayong magagaling na alumni ng ating singtang paaralan. Naway dumami pa kayo. At susunod na itong batch na nasa Zoom natin. Okay? PUP, regardless sa kung anong kasarian, mabuhay tayong lahat. Ayan, sandali lang. Mag-a-admit ako. Alam niyo naman, ako'y, ako'y lahat dito. <laughs> Okay, so let us move on to awarding the Certificate of Appreciation to our speaker, no other than Mr. John Paolo Sarce. Ayan, please allow me to read what's on the certificate. Polytechnic University of the Philippines, Office of the Vice President for Student Affairs and Services, Alumni Relations and Career Development Office, this Certificate of Appreciation is hereby given to Mr. John Paolo Sarce, Researcher and faculty member at Ateneo de Manila University, Polytechnic University of the Philippines, in grateful acknowledgement of his engagement and insightful academic contribution as resource speaker, imparting unparalleled knowledge and expertise on the topic, the PUP and experience as journey to self-discovery mm -hmm. during the webinar series with the title Balik Sintang Paaralan, the PUP Alumni Webinar Series, held on June 26, 2023 via Zoom and Facebook live stream given this 26th day of June 2023 at the Polytechnic University of the Philippines, Santa Mesa, Manila, signed Engineer Florinda H. Oquindo, Director, Alumni Relations and Career Development Office, signed Mr. Tomas Autistor, MPA, Vice President for Student Affairs and Services. Thank you so much, Sir JP, for inspiring us today. Inviting to all, please open your camera for a photo op with Sir JP. Paot pa photo op naman class. Ayan class talaga na yun. <laughs> okay, everyone, please share your camera. Please share your camera. There, I can see the beautiful faces of the mm -hmm. College of Education students and our <laughs> and some visitors here. Hello, good afternoon. Okay. There, okay. One, two, three. Everyone, please smile. One, two, three. There. And one more. One more. Wait lang for a while. There. Please click any reaction from our Zoom. There. Any reaction? Anong nararamdaman nyo ngayon? There. Pakiclick naman. Okay. One, two, three. Everyone, please smile. There. Hindi ba ako nalag sa Zoom? Oh my gosh. Sorry, sorry. Naglalag ako. Mukhang may power interruption na naman po sa university, sa klolo. Ayan. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> naglalag ako. Wait lang. Kaloka. Okay, wag na natin pahabain to. Baka mawala ako ng tuluyan dito sa Zoom. Again, thank you everyone. To all participants, please do not forget to answer the evaluation form posted already in our chat box here in Zoom and comment section. Ipopost ko po ito sa ating FB page. For you to receive your e-certificate, please don't forget to evaluate, okay? Through your email. And also, marami pong emails na bumabalik sa amin kasi hindi daw active. Please use your active email para ma-receive niyo po ang inyong certificate. Kindly visit the PUP Alumni Facebook page and YouTube channel, the PUP Art, the TV. Then like and share the webinar live stream video so that other students and alumni can also be able to learn and inspire by our webinars. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that wraps up our afternoon. Thank you all for taking time in our busy schedules to join us here on this day. It's been our pleasure to host this event and I hope you were inspired by our speaker. Nako naman. I agree naman doon. Talaga namang na-inspire tayo. Once again, I'm Mavel Bilagarde, your moderator. God bless everyone. P.U.P. Him.
evaluation natin, I think hindi pa available yung date natin. I'll be posting the evaluation link sa ating comment section sa ating FB Live. Please visit na lang PUP Alumni FB page para po sa evaluation form. Thank you so much. I'll be ending the Zoom in 3, 2, 1. Thank you, Miguel, for the reminder. Thank you, Sir JP. Thank you so much. God bless everyone. In 3, 2, 1.